In this video, we're going to see what effect the transmission cooler has on our transmission temperatures. We're going to do uh, a run uphill with our fully loaded caravan before we fit the transmission cooler. And then we're going to do the same run after we fit the transmission cooler and see if it makes any difference. Stay tuned and see if it's a worthwhile investment for you. Okay, so in all my time in the motor trade, I've seen many transmissions destroyed by overheating, and I didn't want to break my transmission that way, so I monitor the transmission temp of my Ranger uh, with an old cell phone and four scan software. So to see how I set this up, I've done a, a video and I'll put a, a link up there somewhere. I was fortunate enough to obtain a trans cooler kit from All Trans, the transmission and driveline specialists. These guys uh, are not like your Repco or your Super Cheap. They are um, a business that supplies all the automatic repair shops with their parts to repair your transmissions. So they know their stuff and, and are in New Zealand and Australia. And I would say, unless you're in the trade, you've probably never even heard about these guys. Yeah, good to deal with. To do this uh, test, I'm gonna run up over the World Pass on State Highway 1 between Blenheim and Seddon with our Ford Ranger and Jayco Silverline loaded up to the hilt, uh, very close to maximum weight we are. Now this section of Highway 1 is steep and windy, a sort of road that kills transmissions. So first off we'll run with no transmission cooler fitted, we'll do exactly the same run with the transmission cooler fitted and see what happens to the transmission. So here goes, over the world pass. Now, weld pass this is. Now, this clip is sped up. I don't normally drive this fast. Uh, the gauges on the right are top left, transmission fluid temperature, TFT. Uh, that's the one I usually pay a lot of attention to. Next to it is e, uh, ECT, which stands for engine coolant temperature. I have this displayed here because although the Ford dash can display the coolant temp, um, I usually have the dashboard set on fuel economy for obvious reasons. Uh, the other two below are not really important. The left one is just measuring the torque converter slip. Uh, yeah, geeky, really. And the right one is measuring exhaust gas temperature, which is even more geeky, to be honest. Um, yeah, although it doesn't look like it's properly connected, because really does the exhaust temperature say static. Uh, you can see the transmission temperature started at over 105 as the approach to world pass is sort of slightly uphill. And I could feel the Ranger working hard to keep to 90 kilometres an hour. So they've just resealed this road, and it's one of the few New Zealand roads without potholes. And as you can see, it is pretty steep and pretty windy. Uh, a busy State Highway 1. Well, busy for the South Island anyway. Okay, so that run temp's got to 109 in the trans, which is where I would start buttoning off because that's that's close to the temp that's going to start doing the damage. Um, but in this case, the hill finished. Uh, this only, this hill's only about 200 metres of elevation, so very small by South Island standards. So now we fit the transmission cooler. I'll do a separate video on how, to, how I did this, uh, but the kit from All Trans was good. Good instructions, uh, everything you needed. Um, and wasn't hard to fit, so it's good. So to fit the old trans uh, transmission cooler, we need to remove the Ford cooler. And you may be asking, why would you do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the Ford cooler is cooled from the engine coolant, and if it fails, it dumps that coolant into the transmission which is a relatively common problem and requires obviously a complete transmission rebuild. So we, by removing it, we eliminate that problem. The other, limit, other limitation it has is the engine coolant can only cool the transmission fluid so much as it's already at 85 or 90 degrees. Um, with our external transmission cooler, uh, we have ambient air temperature uh, that we can use and this is, uh, is obviously way better capacity to cool the transmission. Okay, so here we go, We're on the same road, World Hill and uh, outside air temperature is slightly warmer. The first run was 22 degrees outside, on, so my ranger said, and this time it's saying 24 degrees. 
So on the right is the transmission temperature on the first run and along the bottom the second run with the Alltrans cooler fitted. I'm sorry that the gauge format is not the same but the first run I was using my iPhone 12 that is now away getting repaired because someone dropped it while biking and yep yeah, I know bit of a muppet. Anyway, the second run is, uh, I'm monitoring that with an old iPhone 7 and for some reason it won't record everything in the same format. Anyway, the, the two things that we really need to be looking at are the TFT, Transmission Fluid Temperature, and the ECT, Engine Coolant Temperature. It would be fair to say that this run I was giving it a hard time trying to get that temperature up, but the cooler does a, does a fantastic job of keeping the temp down. Since fitting this cooler we haven't done a lot of kilometres with the caravan but I can't get the temperature over to go over 100 degrees no matter what I do. Previously if the temp got to 110 I would ease off the throttle and uh, in traffic that sometimes means pulling over so you're not uh, holding up other motorists. I have had the trans, difference, the trans temperature well over 110 degrees once when we were going to Robin Hood Bay uh, in the South Island on a gravel road where easing off wasn't really an option and pulling over was definitely not an option. Uh, I changed the transmission oil after we did that run and uh, yeah, the oil was showing signs of being burnt. So 110 is definitely my number. So with this cooler fitted, I'm pleased to report it looks like we won't be having that problem anymore. So there is one other thing to bear in mind on the Ranger transmission. The factory cooler also has another job, and that is to help the transmission fluid warm up quickly. And it does this with a thermostat that allows a small amount of oil to run through the factory cooler, which is actually a heater at the moment, warming up the transmission fluid. Then when it gets to the ideal oper operating temperature, the thermostat opens fully and allows engine coolant to try and keep the trans at the right temperature. So I have noticed a difference here, um, and yes, I monitor the transmission temperature all the time, I know, a bit of a geek. Um, I have a set run I do, two days a week, dropping Sandy off at work in town, and before the transmission cooler was fitted, the trans temp was up to 80 degrees by the time I got there, uh, about a 10 minute drive. Now I need to drive about 14 minutes with uh, just the ute before, it's up to temperature and I suppose in a very cold climate that time might even be longer. So that is something to keep in mind. The warm up time may be extended once an external cooler is fitted. So the vehicle is doing a lot of um, school runs with this cooler fitted, it may not get up to the ideal operating temperature as quickly as before. With the van on, the warm up time is very very similar. I didn't measure it before but it's under six minutes now so I'm pretty happy with that. Is a cooler worth it? Well this kit is around about the $800 mark including GST plus fitting which you may be able to do yourself and you have to have a look at my upcoming video and see whether you can do it or whether you need to pay someone to do it um, but even if you need to pay someone it's way cheaper than a transmission repair. Now I know that overheating the oil is one of the major causes of transmission failure. If the trans fails, you're up for thousands. So if, like us, your vehicle spends uh, some of its time grinding up New Zealand's steep hills with a great big weight on the back, yes, it's worth it in my opinion. All trans have a kit uh, for all sorts of different vehicles. Um, they're great guys to deal with, and as I said, uh, they just do automatic transmission stuff. Uh, and they're in New Zealand and Australia. I'll put a link to their site in the description. You just need to find the kit that fits your vehicle and then hit the ask for price button and make sure you mention Kiwi Wanderers in the comments. Okay, so I hope you got something out of this video. Um, if you did, think, please think about subscribing. We have some, uh, some good videos coming up, including the installation of the cooler kit, so stay tuned. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time.